In this lesson, we are going to see what is a visa, if you need a visa for your trip and which type of visa you may need. When organizing a mobility abroad, one of the first things to know is that you may need a visa to enter the host country. Visa is the authorization initially granted in accordance with the country immigration law to enter the country for a given purpose. The possession of a visa is not a guarantee of entry, which is subject to the approval given by the immigration official at the borders. Generally, visa is issued by embassies or consulates. It may consist in a document, but more commonly it is a sticker attached in your passport. Getting a visa is not always mandatory. Countries, indeed, may have visa waiver agreements for some kind of trips. Regarding the type, each country typically has a variable number of visas, with various names. Bearing in mind this complexity, the three actors who can guide you to the correct visa are your home institution, your host institution, and the competent embassy or consulate. If you feel like you don't fit in any of the following situations, take care of asking for more information to these actors. There are four main variables you should consider when asking for a visa. First, your destination in relation with your nationality. Second, the duration of your trip. Third, its purpose. Fourth, the need of movement from and to the country during the mobility. Let's start with the first variable, which is the destination of your trip. There are five common scenarios. First scenario. You are a European national and you are going to a new European country or to a non-EU country that is a member of the Schengen area. Second scenario, you are a non-EU national, you hold a valid residence permit issued by a European member state and you are going to a Schengen country. Third scenario, you are a non-EU national, you hold a valid residence permit issued by a European member state and you are going to a European country that is not a member of the Schengen area. Fourth scenario, you are a non-EU national, you do not hold a valid residence permit issued by a European member state and you are going to a European country. Fifth scenario, whether you are a European or a non-EU national and you are going to an extra European destination. In the first scenario, you do not need a visa. You can freely move with no limits with your valid national ID or passport, regardless of the other variables. In the second scenario, you do not need a visa as well. You can freely move with your valid residence permit together with your passport. In the third, fourth, and fifth scenarios, unless a visa waiver agreement exists for your case, you need a visa. In these cases, get in contact with your home and lost institutions and the competent embassy or consulate to be guided. And this is the end of the description of the first variable. The second variable to be considered is the duration of your trip. Countries usually distinguish between two types of visa in accordance with the trip's duration. Short-stay visa, if your trip has a duration up to 90 days, or long-stay visa, if your trip is longer than 90 days. Some countries, such as Russia or some Asian nations, envisage shorter durations for short-stay visa, for instance, only 30 or 60 days. Short stays are usually connected to tourism or conferences or business trips, Visa waiver agreements are commonly signed for short-stay visa. If your home country has such an agreement with your host country, you do not need a visa. Long stays are usually connected to study or work trips. Visa waiver agreements for long stays are not so common, but do exist. For example, Italian students do not need a visa to carry out a semester abroad in Argentina. And that's almost all about the second variable. The third variable is the purpose of your trip. The purpose is crucial for two reasons. Combined with the duration, it defines the type of visa. It also defines the activities you are allowed to carry out and the ones you are not allowed to. For example, a study visa or a tourist visa may not allow you to work. 
The four most common purposes for academic trips are study, research, short conferences or visits, scientific missions. For study purposes, usually you need a long stay visa. Commonly, countries envisage study visa. So, if you have a student who will spend a semester abroad or will attend a university program abroad, you will normally need a study visa, unless a visa waiver agreement exists for your case. Research purposes may lead to a long stay visa as well. Some countries envisage research visa. In others, research fall under work visa. Study visa is applicable in other cases. The scope of research is also relevant. Bibliographical research or not paid lab activities done by students likely fall under a study visa. If you have a work contract instead, you may need a research visa or a work visa, depending on the country. Research trips, either for long or short stays, may require ad hoc authorizations if they involve activities that are classified or may be perceived as being sensitive. For conferences or project meetings, unless a visa waiver agreement exists for your case, usually you need short stay visas, such as tourism or a business or a conference visa. For example, an Italian professor attending a conference in South Africa enjoys a visa waiver policy and does not need a visa. The same professor will need instead a business or a tourist visa if the conference is in Russia. For cultural or scientific missions, for instance archaeological sites, either for long or short stays, you need a specific visa connected to the mission itself. This visa is usually linked to a pre-existing approval of the mission by the national authorities. These are the main purposes to be considered for academic trips. Now we can move to the next variable. The fourth variable is the need of movements from and to the country during the mobility. Visa may allow single entry in the country or multiple entry. With a single entry visa, you can enter the country only once. The moment you exit the country, your visa will be automatically cancelled. With a multiple entry visa, you are allowed to enter and exit more than once within the validity of the visa and up to its maximum duration. So, if you plan to move through the borders, it's better if you apply for a multiple entry visa. Let's recap. When asking for a visa, you should consider four variables. First, your destination in relation with your nationality, which basically defines whether you need a visa or not, according to the existing laws and agreements between your home country and your host country. Second, the duration of your trip that defines if your visa is a short stay or a long stay one. Third, its purpose, which defines whether you need a visa for study, research, work, conference, business or tourist reasons, or you need an ad hoc authorization. Fourth, the need of movements from and to the country during the mobility, which brings you to apply for a single entry or a multiple entry visa. Please remember that you are never alone in the process. Your home and host institutions and the embassy or consulate in charge can guide you to the most suitable visa for your case. Don't be afraid to ask.